Hello everyone, Sandrak here. So in today's video, I want to tell you the top 12 4 stars to build. Now the reason I'm making this video is because given that Genshin has become a year that's almost one half years old at this point, a lot of people are keep talking about building 5 stars and I recently realized that probably the most of the active players so far are not the players that are from 1.0, so a lot of new players or at least relative new players and that leaves a lot of room for content creators like me to do more guides that are more oriented towards new players. Now this is going to be my first experimental approach on this. So for this one I'll be recommending 5 sub DPS, 4 supports and 3 main DPS to build in terms of 4 star characters only. Now of course for sub DPS it pretty much works even with an already very aged account you can still build the four star characters and get great performance results from them but the main dps section would definitely be a hundred percent dedicated to the new players who doesn't have a five star dps yet and is looking to have an easier time in the game so with that said let's get started so starting with the four stars uh, sub DPS, I'll be for all three categories. I'll be going from my most recommended to my least recommended. So the first one we got is of course Xing Chu. Now, if you're wondering how his name actually pronounced, the Chinese pronouncing is called Xing Chu. Uh, Xing Chu is probably the closest one I've heard. Now, the main reason you want to build Xing Chu as a sub DPS is because his ability to constantly apply hydro with his talents. Uh, his E allows you to. Um, essentially gain four swords that can essentially heal you and block parts of damage overall. His Q is his main sub DPS goal. Uh, his Q is basically the same swords but those will be attacking with you uh, while your character main character attacks. So he's a very good sub um, DPS off-field sub DPS and he's definitely one of the best ones out there. Now as for exactly main constellations you want to go for him, C1 is important because it gives you more healing, C2 if you're playing child is important because it gives you a hydro res decrease, C4 is completely unnecessary. C4 is nice, but C4 asks you to go Q first and E, which is completely unnecessary. His main constellation is on C6, which gives him a huge damage boost. But if you're a new player, C1 is all you need to build him. So that's it for Xing Chu. Moving on to the next character that I would like to recommend to build, which is Shanling. Shanling is going to be one of the characters you are guaranteed to get in the beginning by clearing, I believe, 4 3 of the Spiral Abyss. She is very good in the sense that, like Xing Chu, she is also used to apply Pyro off field, and her Pyro Nato is able to do a lot of damage. So, again, going through her skills very briefly. Her E allows her to summon Guoba, who's a bear-ish creature. He does uh, attack periodically once in a while. That's not her main damage output. Her main damage output again comes from her Q, where she essentially uh, uh, uses her poem to swing around her. And while the poem is swinging around her, it constantly deals pyro damage to anyone nearby. Now, main constellations for Shanling to look for if you're looking to build her. Um, I would recommend building her half um, pyro half physical if you're a beginner as um, a transition if you do not have C4. C4 is the main constellation needed to increase the duration of Pyronado which gives her more damage. Uh, other than that, C1 and C2 are both nice to have of course. Uh, C6 is not necessary for her complete build. C4 is necessary for her to become a very top tier um, pyro, pyro sub DPS. But if you're not having C6, uh, her physical attack can also work. So you can build sort of a hybrid build where you go half physical and half pyro. Moving on to the third character on my recommendation list, the rest three I'll note are tied. So the uh, first one is of course Fischl. Um Personally, it's kind of funny. I have C5 Fischl. Uh It's been over a year already. I just never managed to get the last constellation and of course i don't buy stuff from the star glitter shop other than uh more wishes that's why i probably don't have c6 but uh c6 visual is nice to have 
But anyways, moving back, uh, Fischl's E allows you to position Alls, which is her main source of damage for off field. Uh, Alls will again attack periodically to deal electro damage. Uh, meanwhile, her Q allows her to transition into Alls and fly a distance for a while. Also, her Q these days are more, li uh, more used as a reposition tool. Uh, for you to move around on the map uh, in the middle of a battle without getting disturbed, whereas her E is her main source of damage in this case. And for her constellations, um, she doesn't really have any... Um, she is an early character, so she doesn't have a lot of restraints on the constellations. Now, of course, C6 is nice, but she is able to be built starting with C1, uh, starting with C0. C1, C2, and C4 are again all nice to have, but she is buildable starting from C1. The next character I would recommend alongside Fischl is generally the one that's paired with her a lot, which is Beto. Now, the reason Fischl and Beto are used is because they're normally used in Taser teams that are generally used to apply uh, hydro plus Electro, which is um, Electro Charge, which can apply to multiple enemies at the same time and do a lot of chain lightning reaction, which is why these two are normally used together. Um, and Fischl also uh, all sometimes serves as a battery for Beto because Beto's Q, um, damn it, Beto's Q um, energy requires 80, which is quite high. So for Beto's E, it's definitely one of the most fun skills in the game so far. It essentially allows you to parry damage. So it's similar mechanics Breath of the Wild if you used to play that game. Um, essentially you can, the moment while you're, um, if you release the, uh, her E at the perfect moment when she is getting attacked, Beto will not only disregard all that damage from attacking, she will also deal damage back to the enemy from the parrying. Now that is the fun part about her E skill, but um, her mostly used skill is actually the Q. E is something nice if you're trying to build her as a sub DPS, whereas most of the time in Taser team, she is used a little more as a Q uh, sub DPS where you just cast Qs and leave and only swap her back in if you have some empty gaps that you need to try to fill in. So for her Q, essentially she summons in um, two uh, lightning that would bounce between two enemies um, and uh, those will deal damage, essentially those will deal lightning discharge damage, and that is her main source of damage. The main problem is that it costs 80, which is why Beto is paired with Fischl a lot of the time to act as, um, to ask for Fischl to act as a battery for her. And the other thing to know for Beto is that the reason she's lower on my recommended list, even though I know there are a lot of Beto mains out there that loves her to death, the main problem is that currently she has anti-synergy with Red and Shogun because Beto's Q will not trigger when Red and Shogun is in her Q state. So with that said, uh, it, those two will not work and uh, currently for Electro comps, you generally have Red and Shogun with Kujo Sarah for the uh, meta comps and beta one official generally pairs into the taser team which is a less meta comp as for constellations for beta c0 is definitely enough um c2 is what you want for more damage for her uh sub dps build because it allows arc lightning which is her q to jump between additional targets c4 allows her to play electro dps in a sense because as soon as she is damaged she, her normal attack will also uh deal electro damage and finally her c6 uh decreases electro res which is completely unnecessary for her for a sex successful beta build and finally, the last character I would like to recommend as a sub DPS for four stars, which is Rosaria. Uh, the main reason Rosaria is recommended is because she is an excellent pairing if you want to apply Cryo. But at the same time, since you are building, uh, if you're still new to the game, a lot of the time you'll end up having a DPS that will have to do a good chunk of physical damage as a substitute, unless you choose all Catalyst users as your main DPS. So in that sense, she also helps with uh, half of the side because Electro plus Cryo is Superconduct, which decreases uh, physical resistance. So she is able to help with half of that by applying the Cryo side of things. As for her actual talents, her E allows her to dash backwards behind the backs of enemies and do a quick strike. Uh, however, larger enemies, any enemies larger than 
uh, Metatrol size will not work. I believe it works for Metatrol unless the Metatrol has a shield, in which case it doesn't work. Her Q is basically a smaller version of Ganyu's Q. Something stays in one place, in which case she plunges down her pole arm, and the pole arm does uh, crowd damage every two seconds. It is again an off field uh, capability, and as you have noticed the trend here, all the characters I recommended so far. Uh, for sub dps have some sort of off field capabilities because then that allows your main dps to stay on the field dishing out the damage while their q's their e's are doing also additional damage off field as for her constellations um as you can see i didn't pull on all the banners where she's on and also she is relatively new compared to some of the 1.0 characters so i have c3 for her her C1 is increasing her own attack speed. This means if you want to build her as a physical main DPS, then this constellation would be useful. This one C2 is very useful for her for sub DPS capabilities because it allows her Q to last four extra seconds, which means it's basically the same as pretty much Shanling C4, but this is on C2. Uh, even though she doesn't do as much damage as Shanling overall, uh, this is a very nice constellation to have. C4 grants you energy, which is nice, and C6 increases, um, physical, decreases physical resistance for 10 seconds, which again, as I've said, if you are someone who is new to the game, you might have to start with a uh, four-star character that does physical damage most of the time, so in that case, C6 is very helpful. But uh, you probably don't have Rosaria at C6 at that point, so um, if you're a Eula main, this could be of help but other than that um c6 is not necessary c2 is what i would recommend before building her because she is not top of the meta but if you only build her starting from c0 it's completely fine moving on to the supports for the supports of course the first one i have to recommend is the so-called six star character the only six star character in Genshin, which is Bennett. Now, the main reason you want to use Bennett is because his support capacity comes in two halves, mainly from his Q. His E is uh, has three levels, so press, hold, short, and hold long. Uh, essentially, what happens is uh, press, he just does a single pyro damage, hold, he does two pyro damage, and level two, uh, you only just three can continuous attacks but she, he gets knocked backwards after that you pretty much only use the press to uh add uh, to give him more energy particles so that's the only reason to use his e uh there's actually no point leveling up his e at all his q is his main source so for his q um and not only gives other people on um, his attack so other people would get a load of attack boost and on top of that um he also heals them by a good chunk uh, although he cannot heal anyone to full but he heals them by a good chunk while he they are standing in his q range which is why he's mostly used because for most of this teams right now bennett is able to fill in the spot for both the buffer and the healer all in one and on top he is very easy to build uh, four piece no bliss oblige is what he normally goes for as for the constellations for bennett i would highly recommend c1 because c1 guarantees that bennett will be buffing um attack no matter what and it limits because if you don't have c1 bennett will only be healing if a character uh active character it needs healing it will only start buffing attack once they have passed the healing threshold however c1 bennett allows you to both heal and uh, buff attack at the same time which is much recommended other than that you don't need any of the constellations and one more note for bennett as you can see, I currently have his C6 active. The reason I have not activated it is because I play Kachin quite a bit. So um, this enforces any sword, Claymore, and Poram user in his Q range to do pyro damage. So if you're someone like me that likes to play with Kachin or any other character that doesn't like to do pyro damage with their auto attacking, uh, you might not want to uh, light up C6. But other than that, it is perfectly fine for Bennett. Moving on to the second character I would like to recommend for um, support. The second one I would like to recommend is Diona. Diona is sort of a similar character to Bennett in the sense that she fills in multiple roles at the same time. Also, she doesn't do it as well as Bennett in terms of healing, 
but the, uh, Diona has her own strengths. So Diona's main focus is on shielding and healing. Shielding mostly comes from her E, which generates Kitty Claws, um, and, oh uh, sorry, Icy Paws, and those Icy Paws will act as shields. They're definitely not as strong as Sean Lee's, but for a beginner, um, her shield is definitely enough strengths or some of the better ones you can get. Uh, as for her Q, her Q heals and also dealing damage. Uh, damage is not impressive, healing is also not as impressive as Bennett, but most of the time since you already showed it, the chance that you need to heal as much as if you're only using Bennett is relatively low. This is why she's also a good character. And moving on to her constellations, she doesn't really need any constellations to play. C1 is a very recommended one to have because it regenerates 15 energy, which allows her to cycle way faster. Um, C2 is very similar to Jean Li C2, so it allows her to grant other characters in your co-op party with uh, with her icy paw, so it allows you to play as a shielder in co-op. And finally, her C6 is um, allows her to grant uh, 300 extra elemental mastery. Um, sorry, it increases 200 elemental mastery so that she can be played as a mini budget version for Mona, but that one isn't used a lot. So mostly for Diona, C1 uh, is recommended if you want to play her. C2 is recommended if you want to play her in co-op. Other than that, she is very free to play build. And her artifacts can also go for piece, uh, for piece um, Noblesse Oblige, and that will do. Moving on to the third character, which is Sucrose. Now, Sucrose is most... Uh, very often compared with Venti and Kazuha. The difference between the three is that Venti focuses more on crowd control and he has less emphasis on damage and increasing damage of other party members. Kazuha's focus is more on increasing damage of other party members and having less emphasis on crowd control. That doesn't mean Kazuha has no crowd control, it's just Kazuha's crowd control doesn't have as big of a range as Venti's Q. As for Sucrose, she sort of focuses on both. Kazuha focuses on buffing characters by directly buffing their damage, whereas Sucrose focuses on buffing reactions where she increases elemental mastery. So for Sucrose, the build is uh, the main reason I'm recommending Sucrose very low is because Sucrose is very hard to have a complete build because the amount of elemental mastery you want to stack on her, and also you want to do that with only the four piece of her Desabinier set, which I don't have here. But the main idea is that for Sucrose, um, essentially she has both crowd control and buffing elemental mastery. So she's a very good support to have. The main problem with Sucrose is of course her energy recharge problem. So for Sucrose E, she does sort of um, small amounts of crowd control meanwhile doing AOE damage and that also swirls quite a bit. Um, and for his Q, uh, for her Q, it's a much bigger version that stays on the field for much longer. However, the main uh, problem again is her energy cost. As for constellation for Sucrose, C1 is recommended because it allows you E to do it another time, which allows gives uh, really some of her energy recharge problems. C2 uh, is recommended because it gives her Q two extra seconds, but uh, completely unnecessary. And the other four constellations are also completely unnecessary to build her. Finally, moving on to the last support I would recommend. Uh, to everyone's surprise, I would actually recommend Noel. Uh, Noelle is an interesting character. She can only serve as a support if she is before C6. However, if you have all six constellations lit up, like mine, she can work as a main DPS actually and do quite well for beginners. Now, of course, her damage won't be on par with characters like Hu Tao um, playing vaporized damage. But um, the main advantage of Noelle is that she can more than hold her own while doing damage. She has shielding, she has healing for her own, and she can dish out damage with wide AoE at the same time. And at the same time, she can also heal other party members. So this is why I recommended her in the support list instead of the main DPS list. So for Noelle's, the, uh, her kit is quite diverse. Her E allows her to generate a shield. The shield can also be given to other characters. However, most of the time when you have the shield up, you want Noelle to be on the field is because while Noelle hits other characters, uh, other enemies while uh, his sh her shield is up, she actually heals all the other party members while 
Uh, also, the chance is only like 58%, as you see for level 9 here, but there are constellations that can increase this to 100% guaranteed. Uh, the main problem with her shield is the duration is 12 seconds, but the cooldown is 24 seconds. So you have to uh, do good rotations in order to make sure not getting hit, if no is the only shielder on the team. As for her Q, her Q basically changes her normal attack into uh, Geo Infused, and on top it greatly increases her uh, AoE, which makes it very good. As for constellations for now, like I've said, you probably want C6 if you want to play her as main DPS and do damage. This allows her to essentially go all defense in terms of artifacts instead of, of attack person. Before this, I believe attack person still benefits her more. Um, as for the constellations, C1 is need. Uh, C1 is definitely recommended to give her that 100% chance of healing when Q and E are both up. C2 is. Uh, recommended most of the time even though Noel's charge attack is kind of clunky but if you use C1 and C2 together when her E and Q are her up her area damage is actually very good so uh, very big so when she spins quite a bit um, she is able to basically deal damage to a lot of characters nearby and this means uh, in with the extra 20% damage it basically gives her a lot a huge damage boost and as I've said, if you want to play her as a main DPS, I would recommend C6, otherwise she is pretty much good to go after C2. Moving on to the main DPS, of course, these will be the less meta of the main DPS because 4 stars, I don't think there's any other 4 star main DPS still in the game that are part of the meta team at the moment. So the first one I would recommend is of course Razor. Razor is like the smaller version for Eula. Uh, Razor plays as physical DPS. Um, his E basically deals a single slash of um, electro damage, but if you hold it, it's able to do an area uh, of damage um, after you hold it for quite a while. The holding skill is good for mining for any beginners out there. Other than that, his E is very good in terms of just giving him energy particles. His Q allows um, the wolf person to appear behind him and do electro damage while he's doing physical damage on top. It also gives him a normal attack speed bonus. That is the main thing because if you're not building him electrical, you don't really care about electro damage behind him. But overall, the main problem is his energy cost, which is why he is normally paired with Fischl to generate energy. And also the cryo side, when you're playing uh, physical, you want to call superconduct, so this is why Rosaria is also good support for Razor, because Rosaria can uh, easily cover her own energy, so Razor can even funnel some of the crowd energy to recharge Razor. As for constellations, C0 is definitely usable. Uh, C1 is increases energy, so that uh, sorry, C1 pick up energy increases damage, so it's definitely nice. Uh, C2 is nice, like the Luke C1, but none of these constellations are necessary. Moving on to the second DPS I would recommend. Now the uh, last two are both Callus users. So for the first one is Ningguang. I actually got my C1 Kachin while trying to C6 this character, but uh, her damage in the early meta was definitely worth it. She's no longer a meta character, but she can still swap into Geo teams once in a while. So for her constellations, I would recommend playing her as a main DPS after C2, mainly because C1 gives her AoE capability while she's normal attacking, although the range is very small. For her C2, it allows her to recast her E after her Q goes. Uh, so essentially, when the main reason for Ningguang is because while she is uh, after she casts her E, she will be able if her after she casts her Q, if her E is on the field. Sorry, let me see if I can find that. Nope, it's not here. But essentially, after you cast her Q, if her E is on the field, uh, her E, which is a J screen, will do the same damage as your main character Ningguang is doing in terms of Q. So after your while your E is present. After you cast your Q, she does 2Q pretty much at the same time. And this is the main reason why you want C2. It's because then you can make sure that you have at least one J screen charge active whenever your Q is up because she only needs 40 energy for her Q, which is the other reason why she's still sort of competitive 
uh, even though she's out of the meta already because she only needs 40 energy for her Q and makes uh, she can spam pretty much and that's the main play for her at the moment in teams with Ito or uh, Johnny or Albedo uh, in main Geo teams she sometimes used as a force substitute comes in um, does the EQ combo and then leaves the field so constellation recommended for her is C2 uh, C4 is a very defensive constellation. I honestly don't know why they're using it. Um, and of course, for C6, it turns her into basically a nuke. Um, also, it again, the damage is not going to compare to five star characters that gone you, but um, she does she does more than hold her own when you get up to C2, and she does a good chunk of damage when you get up to C6. Final character I would recommend, and also Catalyst user, of course, it's not gonna be Barbara. Also, I would be interested to build DPS Barbara one day. The last character I would recommend is Yan Fei. I got my C1 Shawnee by accident while trying to C6 Yan Fei. So, for Yan Fei, the build is very simple. You just go the classic four piece Crimson Witch build. As for her E and Q, uh, you pretty much just cast them whenever uh, it's necessary because her E and Q are both focused on damage um, and also her Q does additionally I believe grant a shield after a certain constellation. So um, the main thing to note is for uh, Yanfei to always keep an eye on her Scarlet Seals. Once your Scarlet Seal is full, which in my case I believe it's 4 because I have her C6, but I think normally it's 3, so once you reach 3 Scarlet Seals, you want to immediately cast your charge attack for maximum damage. So that is the main focus for her. As for Constellations, you want C1 because it decreases charge attack as I've said before. She needs to weave in charge attack to get the most out of her damage. So uh, with the reduced stamina cost for charge attack, it is very nice for her. C2 is again like the look C1, it's not necessary. And C6 is the one that grants you the extra Scarlet Seal, which you should keep an eye on. Because that allows you to basically do 4 Scarlet Seals at a time instead of 3. So that's the top 12 characters I would recommend to uh, 4 stars of course to build. Now of course for the other um, few characters it's still nice that if you can build them. Uh, currently as you can see I am on a route to build everyone. Uh, and I'll definitely make a video on that once I'm able to put everyone to level 90. I'm still working on that. So that's all I have for this video. Thank you very much for watching and have a nice day.